Hi, so today's topic is on pituitary disorders. There are two main disorders we will be studying, diabetes insipidus and SIADH. There are two lobes in the pituitary gland which are separated by the intermediate lobes. The hormones are produced in the hypothalamus and are stored in the posterior pituitary gland until their release is triggered by the appropriate stimuli. Hormones secreted by the anterior pituitary gland regulate growth, metabolism, pigment changes and sexual development. These functions are affected when the pituitary gland secretes too much or too little of one or more hormones. The posterior pituitary gland secretes vasopressin, also known as the antidiuretic hormone, or ADH. ADH is the single most important hormone responsible for fluid balance by either increasing the rate of water reabsorption from the adrenal tubules or decreasing the rate of water reabsorption. Also, it also stimulates the peripheral blood vessels to constrict. Posterior pituitary problems result in fluid and electrolyte imbalances. Reabsorption of water supports blood pressure and blood volume. ADH also contributes to control of the sodium level in the extracellular fluid by control of plasma osmolality. ADH is, is released to stimulate fluid reabsorption, thus retaining water and maintaining the sodium balance. Blood osmolality is the most important stimulus to ADH secretion. DI is a condition which is caused by a deficiency of production or secretion of ADH or a decreased renal response to ADH. ADH deficiency results in the excretion of large volumes of dilute urine leading to polyuria. The amount of urine excreted may vary from 4 liters to 20 liters per day. This results in fluid and electrolyte imbalances caused by the increased urine output, decreased urine specific gravity, decreased urine osmolality, and increased plasma osmolality. There are three types of diabetes insipidus. The first is central or neurogenic DI, which is caused by a defect in the hypothalamus or the pituitary gland, resulting in a lack of ADH production or its release. Examples are brain tumors, CNS infections, brain lesions, and head injury. Nephrogenic DI, there is inadequate renal response to ADH despite the presence of adequate ADH. This can be drug-induced such as lithium or can be secondary to renal disease such as polycystic kidney disease or chronic renal insufficiency. It can be secondary to hypercalcemia and hypokalemia or with the disease of the renal tubules. The third is a psychogenic DI, which is rare, and there is excessive water intake, as in water toxicity. There is a lesion in the third center or a psychiatric disorder, usually. Pathophysiology. Diabetes insipidus is caused by abnormality in the functioning or levels of ADH, also known as vasopressin manufactured in the hypothalamus and stored in the pituitary gland adh helps to regulate the amount of fluid in the body in healthy individuals when the bodily fluids are depleted adh is released from the pituitary gland which prevents the excretion of fluids from the body in the form of urine adh acts on the kidneys to increase water permeability in the collecting duct and distal convoluted tubule and water is reabsorbed. In central DI, the production or release of ADH is too slow is too low to stop the kidneys from passing dilute urine, which results in an increased loss of water or polyuria. People with nephrogenic diabetes insipidus, however, have adequate amounts of ADH in the body, but the kidneys fail to respond, which again results in polyuria with a very low urine specific gravity, less than 1.005, and very low urine osmolality, less than 100 milliOS. Loss of water by the kidney results in hypernatremia, which increases thirst. Dehydration and resulting hypernatremia causes increased plasma osmolality, 
which in turn stimulates osmo receptors which also stimulates the thirst center therefore patient experiences severe polydipsia signs and symptoms of dehydration and hypernatremia can be seen as clinical manifestations this is a visual of um, diabetes insipidus assessment clinical manifestations most of the manifestations of di are related to dehydration the key manifestations are an increase in the frequency of urination and excessive thirst urine output may be 4 to 20 liters per day or about 200 ml per hour patient can go into hypovolemic shock although increased fluid intake prevent serious dehydration and volume depletion the patient who is deprived of fluids or who cannot increase oral intake may develop shock from fluid loss. Watch for manifestations of dehydration such as poor skin turgor and dry or cracked mucous membrane or skin. The signs and symptoms can vary depending on the type or cause. Central DI signs and symptoms occur suddenly and nephrogenic DI is less dramatic than the central DI. There's usually increased thirst, the compensation of water loss, increased urination, nocturia, large quantities of dilute urine 5 to 20 liters per day with low specific gravity less than 1.005, low urine osmolality less than 100 and increased plasma osmolality more than 295. There's dehydration, weight loss, increased serum osmolality related to hypernatremia and pure water loss from the kidneys. Increased temperature electrolyte imbalances with serum sodium more than 145 and hypotension leads to hypovolemia. Vascular collapse can also occur. How is it diagnosed? Water loss produces changes in, in blood and urine tests. The first step in diagnosis is to measure a 24-hour intake and output. Urine is dilute with low specific gravity, less than 1.005, and low osmolarity, less than 100. To differentiate between a central and nephrogenic DI, we first obtain the baseline weight, urine specific gravity, and osmolality, and the volume is obtained. After 8 to 12 hours of being NPO, desmopressin 0.5 mg is given sub-Q or intranasally. After 30 to 60 minutes, urine output and osmolality is measured again. Both urine volume and specific gravity and osmolality is increased significantly in central DI, whereas not much change is seen in if the cause is nephrogenic. Management of central DI. The fluids are not restricted and they are replaced both orally and by IV. In acute DI, hypotonic D5W or half normal saline is used. The volume of intravenous fluids is titrated depending on the urine output. Monitor blood glucose level when using dextrose solutions. Desmopressin increases the action of existing ADH and possibly has a stimulating effect on the production of ADH in the hypothalamus. When ADH deficiency is severe, ADH analogs like DDAVP or aqueous vasopressin is replaced in amount sufficient to maintain the water balance. DDAVP is a synthetic form of vasopressin given orally, intravenous, sub-Q or intranasally in a metered spray and is a drug of choice. During severe dehydration, ADH may be given IV or IM. Intranasal drought is avoided with upper respiratory tract infections or nasal congestions. DDAVP constricts smooth muscles and can elevate systemic blood pressure. It may also cause ulcers of the mucous membrane, sensation of chest tightness. Continue to monitor for weight gain, headache, depression, restlessness, le level of consciousness, hyponatremia, and urine output. Vasopressin tannate is used and is given in, as a sub-Q. This can cause 
abscesses and lipodystrophy at the site of injection due to changes in the subcutaneous fat. Rotate injection site and vasopressin tannate is contraindicated if, uh, if allergic to peanuts. Chlorpropamide and carbamazepine are thought to potentiate the action of ADH and therefore helps and also helps to decrease the thirst response associated with DI. Nephrogenic DI management. Hormone replacement therapy has little effect because ADH is adequate. For nephrogenic DI, correct the underlying cause or stop causative medications. Begin with the low salt diet. Treatment revolves around dietary measures. Low sodium diet, less than 3 grams per day, is thought to help decrease urine output <coughs> and also decrease protein diet <coughs> to decrease urine output. Thiazide diuretics slow the GFR and allow kidneys to reabsorb more water in the loop of Handley and distal tubule. Thiazide diuretics like hydrochlorothiazide and chlorothiazide as used. Indesin, which is an NSAID, also helps to increase renal responsiveness to ADH and is used when a low sodium diet and thiazide diuretics are not effective. Combination of thiazides with NSAIDs are known to work better. PPIs are also given in order to combat gastric irritation. Now, nursing diagnosis. Some of the nursing diagnoses that can be formulated are Impaired urinary elimination related to polyuria, confusion related to dehydration and hyperosmolality, fluid volume deficit related to polyuria, knowledge deficit related to diagnosis, tests and treatment, and risk for altered body temperature related to dehydration. Nursing interventions includes assessment, determine if the patient had a recent hypophysectomy, a head trauma, a brain tumor, an infection, or the use of drugs that inhibit ADH release like ethanol, lithium, and phenytoin. Determine what manifestations associated with DI are present. Does the individual complain of urinary frequency or excessive thirst? Are the signs of dehydration such as tachycardia, poor skin turgor, or dry mucous membranes and skin or neurological changes? like altered level of consciousness, disorientation, decreased attention span, or irritability present, or measures of fluid and electrolyte status within normal limits. Is bladder distension present? Interventions include monitoring vital signs and neurological and cardiovascular status, providing a safe environment, particularly in the client with a change in level of consciousness or mental status, monitoring electrolyte values for and for signs of dehydration, monitoring the isonos, daily weights, and specific gravity of urine, and maintaining the intake of adequate fluids. Instruct the client to avoid foods or liquids with a diuretic type of action. High-protein diets increase urine output and the excretion of sodium. Skin care is necessary. Administer medications including DDAVP or thiazide diuretics and also monitor for overtreatment with DDAVP. Limit sodium to less than 3 grams and do not restrict water. Evaluations and outcomes are measured to see if, there was, if the patient is able to verbalize understanding of the disease process and if the client is compliant with In summary, diabetes Insipidus is associated with deficiency of production or secretion of ADH. We went through the different types of DI, the manifestations, and uh, one of which main is uh, dilute urine with uh, urine output greater than 200 ml per hour. And um, nursing care includes early detection and maintenance of adequate hydration and patient teaching for long-term management.